What's going on, y'all? Attorney Tom here, back with another USCSB React. This video is titled Iron in the Fire. So we don't know what it's about yet, but let's find out. As always, stick around to the end of the video when I give my verdict where I will assign percentages of fault that I think are applicable in this case. And as always, I want you to participate and leave your own percentages of fault as well. Let's jump right into it. Everything was changed that morning. And when Kelly and I got to the hospital, the first thing the doctors told us, walking in the door, was he was burned 95% of his body, and we don't think he's gonna make it. There's nothing you can say to that. As many of y'all know, I'm a catastrophic personal injury lawyer. This is what I do for a living. Refinery explosions, vessel collisions, 18-wheeler collisions. I don't deal with people who have a hurt back. I deal with people who are paralyzed, who are burned head to toe, who are wrongfully killed, wrongful death cases. And I can say this, of all the injuries I've ever seen, being burned is by far the worst. It's the most painful. It's the most excruciating. Sometimes living is literally worse than dying. Ugh, it just gives me chills. Burn cases are the most severe cases, in my opinion. January 31st, 2011. Two maintenance workers were troubleshooting a problem with a bucket elevator at the Hagenese Powdered Metals plant in Gallatin, Tennessee. Suddenly, fine particles of iron dust ignited when workers attempted to restart the elevator's motor. The CSB investigation into that accident was underway when just two months later, on March 29th, a similar flash fire burned another Hagenese worker. Was that the same facility? So let me get this right. An incident happens in January, burns two people. We don't know what happened to them yet. Two months later, another incident happens at the same facility. Remember, the name of the game when you're dealing in a factory setting is preventability. Is it preventable? Is it foreseeable? What safety processes do you have in place to prevent things from happening and generally while no catastrophic incident is ever okay if you have one catastrophic incident followed by another catastrophic incident of the exact same nature it means that likely the employer did not learn their lesson this shit makes me so mad at a news conference in tennessee on may 11th the CSB released laboratory test results demonstrating the combustibility of even small amounts of the iron dust when dispersed in air in the presence of an ignition source. Just 16 days after the CSB released those test results, on May 27th, a hydrogen explosion erupted in the plant. The blast shook loose iron dust. Is that a separate one? Was there a third explosion? In this plant, let me just confirm, January, March, and May. Ah! Uh -huh. We don't even know what happened yet, but clearly this iron dust is combustible. So what does that mean? It means that they need to store it or get rid of it appropriately. So even if somebody needs to come into the factory at night when it's closed every single night and clean it head to toe, to get rid of this iron dust that is clearly just lingering around, that's what needs to happen. Even if it takes a lot of time, even if it takes a lot of effort, even if it takes a lot of money, because clearly this is combustible and there are ignition sources everywhere in this factory. 27th, a hydrogen explosion erupted in the plant. The blast shook loose iron dust accumulations from the upper reaches of the building, which ignited and rained down on workers. 
Combustible dust is a serious workplace hazard across the country. Since the Chemical Safety Board was established in 1998, three of the deadliest accidents we have investigated have been combustible dust explosions. They are entirely preventable, just like the dust fires that occur at Hagenis. The Hagenis Corporation is a subsidiary of GKN, a multinational engineering company headquartered in the United Kingdom. The Hagenese Gallatin facility, located some 30 miles from Nashville, employs about 180 workers in the production of powdered metals with a capacity of 300,000 tons per year. The main product is over 99% pure iron powder, used primarily in the automotive industry. The manufacturing process releases combustible metal dust into the workplace. The dust must be controlled and not allowed to accumulate. But when the CSB examined the Hagenese facility after each of the three accidents, we were alarmed to discover literally tons of accumulated dust on surfaces throughout the facility. The combustible iron dust should not be allowed to accumulate. And after each of the three instances that happened at this factory, they were shocked by the amount of combustible iron dust that was literally allowed to accumulate. Look at this. Look at all of this. Surfaces throughout the facility. At the Hagenese facility, iron powder travels through the plant by a system of conveyors and bucket elevators. The belts on the bucket elevators had a tendency to become misaligned, causing the motors to overload and shut down. On January 31st, 2011, a maintenance mechanic and an electrician were sent to inspect a bucket elevator that had just malfunctioned to see if the belt was off track. It appeared to be aligned properly, and the mechanics radioed the control room operator to restart the motor. The dust collection bag house had been out of service periodically over the previous week. Fine particles of iron dust remained in the area of the motor. As the motor restarted, combustible iron dust was suddenly dispersed into the air. The two workers were immersed in a thick dust cloud. Almost immediately, the iron dust found an ignition source, likely an electrical arc from exposed wiring on the motor. A flash fire erupted, engulfing both workers. Both men were severely burned. The first worker died from his injuries just two days after the accident. The second survived for nearly four months, but died in May of 2011. So in the catastrophic personal injury world, we represent clients who are severely injured like this. And unfortunately, the only thing we can do for them is get them money. That is the only remedy allowed under the law. We can't make anybody go to jail. We can't turn back the clock and make this never happen. We can only get people money. And in wrongful death cases like this, where the individuals die, well, it's not as simple as what was their life worth. You also need to compensate them for what they had to go through. One guy was burned head to toe for two days and then died. He suffered for two days, 48 hours. The other guy suffered for four months and then died. What do you think it's like living for four months burned head to toe? The amount of pain using the restroom, seeing your loved ones look at you. It's quite literally indescribable. And certainly this refinery did not give a about its employees. They let three instances happen in three months without making any changes. Likely they don't care. After the first accident, the CSB documented that combustible iron dust was visible in the air and that it coated most surfaces up to four inches deep. These CSB investigation photos Look at that! show the accumulated dust on elevated surfaces where the dust could be readily dislodged and ignited. The CSB report noted that engineering controls such as enclosing conveyors and installing properly designed dust collection equipment are the best ways to prevent dust accumulations. But as this CSB investigation video shows, the plant's powder handling equipment was not adequately sealed. Combustible dust was always present in the air inside the plant. 
In this investigation video, dust particles ignite and sparkle as they contact an indoor hydrogen gas flare from one of the plant's furnaces. And employees told CSB investigators that dust collectors were often down for maintenance. Housekeeping measures were the last line of defense for removing the large amounts of dust that constantly accumulated on plant surfaces. But the CSB found that housekeeping at Hagenies was ineffective. Those conditions led to a second serious accident at the plant, less than two months after the first deadly flash fire. On March 29, 2011, a Hagenese engineer attempted to reconnect a gas line to a 20-foot high furnace following maintenance, but he was having difficulty. Standing on a ladder held by a second worker, he tried hammering the line into place. As the hammer struck, Iron dust that had accumulated on the side of the furnace was lofted into the air. The iron dust ignited, burning the engineer, who jumped and fell from the ladder. Partly protected by a heavy flame-resistant coat, he received first and second degree burns to both of his thighs. The buildup of so much iron dust near a furnace with open flames and hot surfaces was a recipe for disaster. A fire was basically inevitable the moment the dust was lofted into the air. Even small amounts of iron dust can produce intense flash fires when ignited, as demonstrated in the CSB's laboratory testing. If just an ounce of dust can produce such a serious fire, you can imagine the magnitude of the fire and explosion hazard from the estimated tons of dust accumulated at the Hagenese plant. Still, Hagenese and its corporate parent, GKN, did not take effective measures to control the dust hazard. Around 6 a.m. on the morning of May 27, 2011, operators near one of the plant's furnaces heard a hissing noise that they identified as a possible gas leak. They believed that the leak came from piping somewhere below the furnaces. Inside a trench under large steel covers, Six mechanics were sent to find and repair the leak as another operator stood by. They assumed it was similar to another recent leak that involved nitrogen, an odorless, non-flammable gas. Unknown to the workers, the leak actually involved a different odorless, invisible gas, highly flammable hydrogen, used in the plant's massive annealing furnaces. Using a forklift, maintenance personnel removed a trench cover above the area of the suspected leak. As the cover was wrenched upward, metal sparks ignited the hydrogen, causing a powerful explosion. Hydrogen continued to leak from piping, fueling a jet fire. The force of the explosion lofted large quantities of iron dust that had accumulated on rafters and overhead surfaces. Falling clouds of dust ignited as they contacted the flames below. Visibility was reduced by the large quantity of dust in the air. One eyewitness reported that even with a flashlight, he could only see three to four feet ahead as he tried to escape. Five workers, including the operator standing by the trench, and four of the mechanics were injured, three of them with severe burns. Two of those workers would die from their injuries within days. The third injured worker succumbed six weeks later. The CSB noted that on the day of the accident, maintenance crews were allowed to work without testing for dangerous concentrations of flammable gas, and that the facility had no procedures to properly mitigate flammable gas leaks. Hagenese did not have an effective mechanical integrity program, allowing corrosion in piping to go unnoticed until the piping failed. And despite mounting evidence of a serious hazard, Hagenies did not make major improvements in its dust control program. Hagen. Okay, that's it. I'm stopping the video early. That's all I need to see. Hagenies, you. You are an evil, evil corporation. What the hell was that? No procedures? You let iron dust accumulate like freaking winter? Oh my God. My verdict.
100% on the corporation, Hegenes, or whatever the hell their name is. Absolutely at fault. I hope you get sued to the Stone Age. I hope you had to pay hundreds of millions of dollars to these workers and their families. Let me know if you feel different in the comments. If anybody doesn't feel that it was 100% Hagenese fault, let me know. So then I can politely tell you that you're wrong. All right, y'all, that's it for today's video. I'm sorry that it got a little intense. I'm, I'm actually pretty upset. But thank you for watching. I hope this video was still worth your time. It's good to see that these things actually happen in the real world. This isn't just some crazy conspiracy that personal injury lawyers make up. These kind of atrocities happen. That's why we need safety in the workplace. So I hope you are safe at your workplace if you work at somewhere like this. As always, leave your comments, questions, concerns down below. Any suggestions, I would appreciate it. I would ask that you consider subscribing to this community. We cover a whole range of topics. Most of the time, it's laughable, lighthearted content on this channel. Thanks again for watching. All right, bye.